Abhigita. An Abhigita, from GEEZ, Abhigita, or Alpha Syllabary, is a segmental writing system in which consonant vowel sequences are written as a unit. Each unit is based on a consonant letter, and vowel notation is secondary. This contrasts with a full alphabet, in which vowels have status equal to consonants, and with an abjad, in which vowel marking is absent, partial, or optional, although in less formal contexts, all three types of script may be termed alphabets. The terms also contrast them with a syllabary, in which the symbols cannot be split into separate consonants and vowels. Abugidas include the extensive Brahmic family of scripts of South and Southeast Asia, Semitic Ethiopic scripts, and Canadian Aboriginal syllabics, which are themselves based in part on Brahmic scripts. As is the case for syllabaries, the units of the writing system may consist of the representations both of syllables and of consonants. For scripts of the Brahmic family, the term akshara is used for the units. Abhigita as a term in linguistics was proposed by Peter T. Daniels in his 1990 Typology of Writing Systems. Abhigita is an Ethiopian name for the GEEZ script, taken from four letters of that script, A. diaresis B. Ugita, in much the same way that Abhisidari is derived from Latin Abhisada, Abjad is derived from the Arabic Abjad, and Alphabet is derived from the names of the two first letters in the Greek alphabet, Alpha and Beta. As Daniels used the word, an abigida is in contrast with a syllabary, where letters with shared consonants or vowels show no particular resemblance to one other, and also with an alphabet proper, where independent letters are used to denote both consonants and vowels. The term alpha syllabary was suggested for the index scripts in 1997 by William Bright, following South Asian linguistic usage, to convey the idea that they share features of both alphabet and syllabary. Abugidas were long considered to be syllabaries, or intermediate between syllabaries and alphabets, and the term syllabics is retained in the name of Canadian Aboriginal syllabics. Other terms that have been used include neosyllabary, February 1959, pseudo-alphabet, householder 1959, semi-syllabary, Deeringer 1968, a word that has other uses, and syllabic alphabet, Colmus 1996, this term is also a synonym for syllabary. The formal definitions given by Daniels and Bright for Abhigita and Alpha Syllabary differ. Some writing systems are abugidas but not alpha syllabaries, and some are alpha syllabaries but not abugidas. An abhigita is defined as a type of writing system whose basic characters denotes consonants followed by a particular vowel, and in which diacritics denote other vowels. This particular vowel is referred to as the inherent or implicit vowel, as opposed to the explicit vowels marked by the diacritics. An alpha syllabary is defined as a type of writing system in which the vowels are denoted by subsidiary symbols not all of which occur in a linear order, with relation to the consonant symbols, that is congruent with their temporal order in speech. Bright did not require that an alphabet explicitly represent all vowels. Faxpa is an example of an abagida that is not an alpha syllabary, and modern Lao is an example of an alpha syllabary that is not an abagida, for its vowels are always explicit. This description is expressed in terms of an abhigita. Formally, an alpha syllabary that is not an abhigita can be converted to an abhigita by adding a purely formal vowel sound that is never used in declaring that to be the inherent vowel of the letters representing consonants. This may formally make the system ambiguous, but in practice this is not a problem, for then the interpretation with the never used inherent vowel sound will always be a wrong interpretation. Note that the actual pronunciation may be complicated by interactions between the sounds apparently written just as the sounds of the letters in the English words wan, gem, and were affected by neighboring letters. The fundamental principles of an abhigita apply to words made up of consonant vowel, cv, syllables. The syllables are written as a linear sequences of the units of the script. Each syllable is either a letter that represents the sound of a consonant and the inherent vowel, or a letter with a modification to indicative vowel, either by means of diacritics, or by changes in the form of the letter itself. If all modifications are by diacritics and all diacritics follow the direction of the writing of the letters, then the Abhigita is not an alpha syllabary. However, most languages have words that are more complicated than a sequence of CB syllables, even ignoring tone. The first complication is syllables that consist of just a vowel, v. Now, in some languages, this issue does not arise, for every syllable starts with a consonant. This is common in Semitic languages and in languages of mainland SE Asia, and for such languages this issue need not arise. For some languages, a zero consonant letter is used as though every syllable began with a consonant. 
For other languages, each vowel has a separate lettered hat is used for each syllable consisting of just the vowel. These letters are known as independent vowels, and are found in most index scripts. These letters may be quite different to the corresponding diacritics, which by contrast are known as dependent vowels. As a result of the spread of writing systems, independent vowels may be used to represent syllables beginning with a glottal stop, even for non-initial syllables. The next two complications are sequences of consonants before a vowel, CCV, and syllables ending in a consonant, CVC. The simplest solution, which is not always available, is to break with the principle of writing words as a sequence of syllables and use a unit representing just a consonant, C. This unit may be represented with In a true abagita, the lack of distinctive marking may result from the diachronic loss of the inherent vowel, for example by syncope and apocope in Hindi. When not handled by decomposition into C plus CV, CCV syllables are handled by combining the two consonants. In the index scripts, the earliest method was simply to arrange them vertically, but the two consonants may merge as a conjunct consonant letters, where two or more letters are graphically joined in a ligature, or otherwise change their shapes. Rarely, one of the consonants may be replaced by a gemination mark, for example the Guramuki. When they are arranged vertically, as in Burmese or Khmer, they are said to be stacked. Often there has been a change to writing the two consonants side by side. In the latter case, the fact of combination may be indicated by a diacritic on one of the consonants or a change in the form of one of the consonants, for example the half forms of Devanagari. Generally, the reading order is top to bottom or the general reading order of the script, but sometimes the order is reversed. The division of a word into syllables for the purposes of writing does not always accord with the natural phonetics of the language. For example, Brahmic scripts commonly handle a phonetic sequence CBCCV as CBCCV or CBCCV. However, sometimes phonetic CBC syllables are handled as single units, and the final consonant may be represented. More complicated unit structures, for example CC or CCBC, are handled by combining the various techniques above. There are three principal families of abugidas, depending on whether vowels are indicated by modifying consonants by diacritics, distortion, or orientation. Ton of the Maldives has dependent vowels and a zero vowel sign, but no inherent vowel. Index scripts originated in India and spread to Southeast Asia. All surviving index scripts are descendants of the Brahmi alphabet. Today they are used in most languages of South Asia, although replaced by Perso Arabic and Urdu. Kashmiri and some other languages of Pakistan and India, mainland Southeast Asia, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia, and Indonesian archipelago, Javanese, Balinese, Sundanese, etc. The primary division is into North Indic scripts used in Northern India, Nepal, Tibet, and Bhutan, and Southern Indic scripts used in South India, Sri Lanka, and Southeast Asia. South Indic latter forms are very rounded, North Indic less so. The Odia, Golmal and Lidamal of Nepal script are rounded. Most North Indic scripts full letters incorporate a horizontal line at the top, with Gujarati and Odia as exceptions, South Indic scripts do not. Indic scripts indicate vowels through dependent vowel signs, diacritics, around the consonants, often including a sign that explicitly indicates the lack of the vowel. If a consonant has no vowel sign, this indicates a default vowel. Vowel diacritics may appear above, below to the left, to the right, or around the consonant. The most widely used index script is Devanagari, shared by Hindi, Bhojpuri, Marathi, Konkani, Nepali, and often Sanskrit. A basic letter such as in Hindi represents a syllable with a default vowel, in this case ka. In some languages, including Hindi, it becomes a final closing consonant at the end of a word, in this case k. The inherent vowel may be changed by adding vowel mark, diacritics, producing syllables such as ki, ku, k, ko. In many of the Brahmic scripts, a syllable beginning with a cluster is treated as a single character for purposes of vowel marking, so a vowel marker like i, falling before the character it modifies, may appear several positions before the place where it is pronounced. For example, the game cricket in Hindi is cricket, the diacritic for appears before the consonant cluster, not before the. A more unusual example is seen in the Batak alphabet. Here the syllable bim is written bama i varama. That is, the vowel diacritic and varama are both written after the consonants for the whole syllable. In many abugidas, there is also a diacritic to suppress the inherent vowel, yielding the bare consonant. 
in Devanagari, is K, and is L. This is called the Varama or Haantam in Sanskrit. It may be used to form consonant clusters, or to indicate that a consonant occurs at the end of a word. Thus in Sanskrit, a default vowel consonant such as does not take on a final consonant sound. Instead, it keeps its vowel dot for writing two consonants without a vowel in between, instead of using diacritics on the first consonant to remove its vowel. Another popular method of special conjunct forms is used in which two or more consonant characters are merged to express a cluster, such as Devanagari, Kla. Note that some fonts display this as followed by, rather than forming a conjunct. This expedient is used by Iski and South Asian scripts of Unicode, thus a closed syllable such as Cal requires two aksharas to write. The wrong script used for the Lepcha language goes further than other Indic abugidas, in that a single akshara can represent a closed syllable, not only the vowel, but any final consonant is indicated by a diacritic. For example, the syllable, sok, would be written as something like s, here with an underring representing gand and overcross representing the diacritic for final. Most other Indic abugidas can only indicate a very limited set of final consonants with diacritics, such as or if they can indicate any at all. In Ethiopic, where the term Abhagita originates, the diacritics have been fused to the consonants to the point that they must be considered modifications off the form of the letters. Children learn each modification separately, as in a syllabary, nonetheless, the graphic similarities between syllables with the same consonant is readily apparent, unlike the case in a true syllabary. Though now in Abhagita, the GEEZ script, until the advent of Christianity, ca. AD 350, had originally been what would now be termed an abjad. In the GEEZ Abhagita, or Fidel, the base form of the letter, also known as Fidel, may be altered. For example, ha, base form, who, with the right side diacritic that doesn't alter the letter, hi, with a subdiacritic that compresses the consonant, so it is the same height, a shore, where the letter is modified with a kink in the left arm. In the family known as Canadian Aboriginal syllabics, which was inspired by the Devanagari script of India, vowels are indicated by changing the orientation of the syllabogram. Each vowel has a consistent orientation, for example, inuktitut pi, pu, pa, t, tu, ta. Although there is a vowel inherent in each, all rotations have equal status and none can be identified as basic. Bare consonants are indicated either by separated diacritics, or by superscript versions of the aksharas, there is no vowel killer mark. Consonantal scripts, abjads, are normally written without indication of many vowels. However, in some contexts like teaching materials or scriptures, Arabic and Hebrew are written with full indication of vowels via diacritic marks, harakot, nikt, making them effectively alpha syllabaries. The Brahmic and Ethiopic families are thought to have originated from the Semitic abjads by the addition of vowel marks. The Arabic scripts used for Kurdish in Iraq and for Uyghur in Xinjiang, China, as well as the Hebrew script of Yiddish, are fully voweled, but because the vowels are written with full letters rather than diacritics, with the exception of distinguishing between slash a slash and slash o slash in the latter, and there are no inherent vowels, these are considered alphabets, not abugidas. The imperial Mongol script called Fagspa was derived from the Tibetan Abhagita, but all vowels are written inline rather than as diacritics. However, it retains the features of having an inherent vowel slash a slash and having distinct initial vowel letters. Pahomung is a non-segmental script that indicates syllable onsets and rhymes, such as consonant clusters and vowels with final consonants. Thus it is not segmental and cannot be considered an abhagita. However, it superficially resembles an abhagita with the roles of consonant and vowel reverse. Most syllables are written with two letters in the order rhyme onset, typically vowel consonant even though they are pronounced as onset rhyme, consonant vowel, rather like the position of the vowel in Devanagari, which is written before the consonant. Paho is also unusual in that, while an inherent rhyme, with midtone, is unwritten, it also has an inherent onset. For the syllable, which requires one or the other of the inherent sounds to be overt, it is that is written. Thus it is the rhyme, vowel, that is basic to the system. It is difficult to draw a dividing line between abugidas and other segmental scripts. For example, the Meroitic script of ancient Sudan did not indicate an inherent A. One symbol stood for both M and Ma, for example, and is thus similar to Brahmic family of abugidas. However, the other vowels were indicated with full letters, not diacritics or modification, 
so the system was essentially an alphabet that did not bother to write the most common vowel. Several systems of shorthand use diacritics for vowels, but they do not have an inherent vowel, and are thus more similar to Tana and Kurdish script than to the Brahmic scripts. The Gabelsberger shorthand system and its derivatives modify the following consonant to represent vowels. The Pollard script, which was based on shorthand, also uses diacritics for vowels. The placements of the vowel relative to the consonant indicates tone. Pittman's shorthand uses straight strokes and quarter circle marks in different orientations as the principal alphabet of consonants. Vowels are shown as light and heavy dots, dashes, and other marks in one of three possible positions to indicate the various vowel sounds. However, to increase writing speed, Pittman has rules for vowel indication using the positioning or choice of consonant signs so that writing vowel marks can be dispensed with. As the term alpha syllabary suggests, abugidas have been considered an intermediate step between alphabets and syllabaries. Historically, abugidas appear to have evolved from abjads, vowelless alphabets. They contrast with syllabaries, where there is a distinct symbol for each syllable or consonant vowel combination and where these have no systematic similarity to each other, and typically develop directly from logographic scripts. Compare the Devanagari examples above to sets of syllables in the Japanese hiragana syllabary, ka, ki, ku, k, ko have nothing in common to indicate k, wa ra, ri, ru, ri, ro have neither anything in common for r, nor anything to indicate that they have the same vowels as the k set. Most Indian and Indo-Chinese abugidas appear to have first been developed from abjads with the Kharosthi and Brahmi scripts. The abjad in question is usually considered to be the Aramaic one, but while the link between Aramaic and Kharosthi is more or less undisputed, this is not the case with Brahmi. The Kharosthi family does not survive today, but Brahmi's descendants include most of the modern scripts of South and Southeast Asia. GE easy derived from a different abjad, the Sabaean script of Yemen. The advent of vowels coincided with the introduction of Christianity about AD 350. The Ethiopic script is the elaboration of an abjad. The Cree family was invented with full knowledge of the Devanagari system. The Meroitic script was developed from Egyptian hieroglyphs, within which various schemes of group writing had been used for showing vowels. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.